Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is David Bradley, and I am the producing director of Arts and Learning at World Cafe Live. We are thrilled to have you here. It's spring, and new things are popping up, including new poems and songs that we get to celebrate tonight. Um, uh, you were first listening to, well, not an old song, but a, a, a uh, previously recorded song. That was Begin to Begin Again by Ami Yaris, one of our teaching artists for tonight. And before that, if you joined right at the beginning, you heard Corazon by our other teaching artist, Lara Liscano. But tonight's about the new songs. Um, at World Cafe Live, we've long admired the work of mighty writers whose mission is simple and powerful. We teach kids to write. And they aim to inspire kids to think clearly and write with clarity, and they do it beautifully. And at World Cafe Live, our mission is to open doors to shared experiences that create connections, inspire learning, and celebrate who we all are. We're a place where artistry meets social impact. And that place has been virtual for a year. We're going to welcome you back uh, as soon as we're able uh, in, in fall. Um, but the virtual is filled with music and poetry tonight. We got together last spring with Mighty Writers to create Mighty Songs for the Moment, and this is our second release celebration. This collaboration joins Mighty Writers with students, uh, Mighty Writers students with World Cafe Live teaching artists to turn poetry that the students have written through Mighty Writers writing program into original songs. So here's what's happened. Over the past six months, six different groups of writers met with teaching artists Laura Liscano and Ami Yaris over Zoom. They got to know each other. They brainstormed how the students' poems could combine and then together work out ideas for song structure, for melody, for rhythm. The artists all came to this collaboration from their strengths, the young people as writers, Laura and Ami as musicians and songwriters, and together they made six songs from 10 different poems. We think of this project as simple snapshots and sound from Laura and Ami's studios, from the homes and the phones of these writers. Last week, one writer even joined us from a hockey rink in Omaha, Nebraska. This is who we are and what matters to us right now. This is how we inventively make connections and make music in 2021. And how we keep our earbuds in, because you know, it's Zoom uh, and anything can happen. So, in his poem, Things to Think, Robert Bly says, think in ways you never thought before. If the phone rings, think of it as carrying a message larger than anything you've ever heard. And Muscogee Creek Nation poet Joy Harjo said in one of her poems, when I woke up from a 40 year sleep, it was by a song. The singers were singing the world into place. The young writers you'll meet tonight are showing us how to think and create in ways we've never thought of before. They carry a message we've never heard. They are singing the world into place. Or, as one of our poets tonight, Sierra Siraj says, learn that you have, have to come out of your shell to show your colors and glow. Embrace your true self, be brave, and let your beauty show. You're gonna hear from these writers. You're gonna hear their poems. You're gonna hear their songs and thoughts, and later on, you're going to get a chance to ask some questions. But right now, let's bring on these artists, the poets and the songwriters and teaching artists, one by one, so that you can meet them. And first, I'd like to welcome in um, Matteo Nevin. Matteo, why don't you join us? Uh, bring your camera on and unmute. Matteo's 11. He joins us from Omaha, Nebraska. He's in fifth grade at Elkhorn Ridge Middle School. How are you doing, Matteo? I'm doing good, thank you. How are you? Great to I'm good. Great to have you here from another time zone. And let's bring on Mateo's writing partner, Alyssa Fernandez. Stay on with us, Mateo. Alyssa's 14. She's in eighth grade at the Reach Cyber Charter School in Philadelphia. How are you doing, Alyssa? Hi, guys. And um, another songwriting pair. These are sisters from South Philadelphia. Stay on with us, Alyssa. Stay on. Um, let's bring on the Jablonski sisters. Katja, wave for us. Katja's 10. And she's in fifth grade at Masterman. And Annika, wait to us. She's eight, and she's in third grade at Nebinger Middle School. Um, and let's bring on uh, Kiki Mazama. Kiki, come on in with us. Uh, Kiki just turned 16. Happy uh, birthday. He's 10th grade. He's homeschooled, and he's in Northwest Philadelphia. Great to have you with us. Um, Sierra Siraj, we just heard a couplet from her. Sierra, come on. She's from Darby, Pennsylvania. 
and she's in 10th grade at Kenwood High School. Come on in, Sierra. Nice to see you, Sierra. Hello. Uh, and then another pair of writers who, who collaborated, Gwyneth Wong, who is seven in second grade from Philadelphia's Facts Charter School. We love when Facts gets to come to World Cafe Live for programs. Hey, Gwyneth, how you doing? Good. Excellent to see you. And Anush Gadar, who's uh, from across the bridge in Edison, New Jersey, sixth grade at John Adams Middle School. How you doing, Anushka? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm excellent. Great to see you and have you with us. And our final uh, writer who's with us tonight is Kalea Jefferson, also from across the bridge in Camden, an eighth grader, 14 from Sacred Heart School in Camden. Hey, Kalea, how you doing? Hi. And let's bring on our teaching artist, Lara Liscano and Ami Yaris, both of them uh, in Philly, uh, World Cafe Live teaching artist. Ami's been working with us for almost six years. Lara started working with us last year with our Philadelphia Lullaby Project, and we're glad to have her as part of this. How are you guys doing? I'm great. Doing nice wonderful. to see you, Ami. I think you're muted. Excellent. All right. And everybody stay off mute right now because we want to hear a little bit from you. We're going to be joined a little bit later for, uh, by Catherine Buck from Mighty Writers, but she'll join us in the middle of the program. But let's um, let's start off with a question and we'll see who wants to take it. But these first two questions were, were brought up by our writers. We were saying, what do you think people might want to know? And somebody said, well, they might want to know what happened in our lives that made us want to write. So could all the writers mute except someone who wants to answer that? Who wants to answer? What happened in your life that made you want to write? Alyssa, you've got the first hand up. Go ahead, Alyssa. Talk to us. Um, what happened in my life that made me want to be inspired to write would be more so the fact that I was never really a confrontational child. So when, say in this instance, if a mother of mine did something I wasn't too fond of, I'd simply write a letter to her explaining what she did and how it made me feel. And from then on, growing up, I always just, anytime I wrote, I always wrote it in a letter form, whether it be a letter to myself or a letter to someone explaining what happened or why it felt this way. So eventually it grew into poetry, um, songwriting, um, stories. I put a lot of my emotions into everything I write. So everything always come from a place within me and from my heart. Wow, that's powerful. And what great thinking on your part. What a great way to use writing to solve problems. I think I saw, um, Annika, you had a hand up. I think you wanted to share what happened in your life that made you want to write. Um, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. You forgot. That's all right. It'll, maybe it'll come back. And you think about it. Mateo had his hand up. Mateo, fire away. Um, so I have always been very fond of writing. I've always loved writing poems and I but when the quarantine hit I really wanted to show it and express it to the world so I just I just started writing more and I started like expressing my poetry freely because I always felt like poetry was a great way to speak your mind in an empowering way. Thank you and, and to those of you who are joining us tonight listen along to the way these writers take it very close in and then open us out to the big world. From Alyssa talking about she wanted to write directly to her mother to Mateo saying he wanted to speak out to the world. You're gonna hear a lot of that tonight. Listen for that along the way. Um, Annika, did it come back to you? No, that's all right. We're gonna go to Anushka. She'll have the last response to this question. Then we have another one more question before we start to hear some poems and songs. Go ahead, Anushka. We all have so much to say whether we can write or not. And some of us keep quiet while others can't stop talking. Writing is a way to express myself without stumbling over my words, and it allows me to convey my, uh, my message to others. I never really started writing, but ever since quarantine started, that's when my words were con conveyed through pencil and paper. I love that thought that everybody's got something to say. Writing's one way to say it. There are other ways. Um, I love how you, you kind of are looking at, at the ways we all work differently. I do want to throw out one more answer to, to see whether Lara or Ami, you want to just offer what happened in your life that made you want to write? Oh, man, that's a, <laughs> that's a very deep question. Um, well, you know, I'm, um, 
I started writing because when I came to the States, I um, was very little, I was 10, um, and I couldn't speak English very well yet, So, but I could write. So I, um, I, I would write a lot because that was the, the best way that I could communicate with everybody else, and then it kind of turned into this um, love for writing in general. You're a kindred problem solver with Alyssa in terms of using writing to, to, to solve things. Um, so here's a question, and this again is a, so beautifully phrased by, uh, by one of the writers as we were talking ahead of time, which is, what moved you to write the poem that you wrote that we're going to hear tonight? What moved you? And we, we talked about how we love that because it was sort of like, there you are, you're in place in your life, and then something bumps you, something moves you. So who wants to... Who, 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 who we haven't heard from wants to share what moved them. I want to see if we get, get someone else a chance to speak. You want, go ahead, Kiki, go ahead. Like I wrote my poem and missed like the Black Lives Matter and George Floyd was going on and that's what inspired my po poem. Thank you, but, thanks for sharing that and, and thanks for connecting your writing to that. Um, uh, Sierra, Kalea, uh, Katya, Annika, any of you want to add what might, what moved you? Go ahead, Kalea. Um, so growing up, um, my dad, he used to sing and write and perform. And growing up, me and all of my siblings would go and watch him perform. So I kind of think I kind of just like took on what my dad was doing and started to write my own poem for music. And kind of just, yeah, just kind of like took on his legacy. Wow, I love that. I took on his legacy. All right, Matteo, close us out here on this question. I mean, what we're hearing, we've already heard so much about family, but we've also heard about world events from the pandemic to the, to the awful murders of, of George Floyd and others last summer in the Black Lives Matter movement. We're personal, we're global. What moved you to write what you wrote, Matteo? So in this, like the place of quarantine I was when I wrote this poem, um, everything was kind of crazy. Everything, a lot of things were going on in like the world. And I realized that it took a lot of bravery for the people who are trying to solve COVID to what they do, because it takes a lot of bravery to just like go and try and treat someone with COVID. They're risking their own lives. And seeing all like the injustice in the world that is raised from this and all the like um, conflict that went ablaze, I kind of saw that it bravery is much more than just like having a, a lot of strength. It's really having that spark and passion in your heart saying that I'm going to do this and I'm brave enough to do it because I know I'm passionate about it. And so I really thought that it took bravery for all of these world conflicts and how these people are trying to kind of try and stop it and block it. And so I just realized that that took a lot of bravery and what people are doing in the world today takes a lot of bravery. It takes a lot of bravery to speak out. It takes a lot of bravery to treat someone with a contagious disease. I saw that it took a lot of bravery to do what a lot of people do in the world. So I, I decided to express my feelings in the poem. That's awesome, Matteo. And, and those of you who joined us, you can see why you, we invited you to come and hang out for a little while with these, with these writers. Um, so we're gonna get a chance to hear from the words and music from all of these folks, but I'm gonna ask only Matteo and Alyssa to stay on right now, um, along with uh, just Matteo and, and, and uh, Alyssa right now, so that we're going to hear the two poems that they wrote. Mighty Writers every month through the fall was sharing a theme and asking writers to respond to that theme. And the theme that Alyssa and Matteo each wrote from was, in fact, bravery. And we're going to hear in a minute the song um, that they collaborated on uh, called Bravery. But let's first um, just hear from uh, Matteo and Alyssa. Matteo, I think you're going to read your poem first. Um, and uh, then we'll hear from Alyssa. So uh, go ahead, Mateo and Anushka, we'll, we'll have you join us in, in a little bit. The first feel of freedom when slaves crossed freed land. The great feel of victory when soldiers conquered enemy sand. It took bravery and just nothing much more, but spirits and sorrow 
to last evermore, to create glorious uprisings filled with peace and glory, all of it simply telling bravery story. Bravery can't be sold, nor can it be given. It's an everyday commitment that you must live in. It's the handy blade at defeat's darkest time, and for every soul, it should be a precious find. With bravery's blade, you can cut through fear's vines, such as taking a test or balancing on a line. In the end, it won't matter how strong or fast you will go. It won't matter if your score was so high or so low, because bravery must be handled steady and slow. It then will morph into a great source of power, killing negativity at the crack of the hour. Just remember that bravery must not be artificial. Don't pair it with strength. Don't pair it with your height and your length. Just keep bravery natural and you'll be on the right route. So next time you wander in thick forests of doubt, all it takes is bravery's guide to get you right out. I'm muted. I love, Matteo, how you talk about keeping it natural and we'll maybe talk about that a little later. But now, Alyssa, um, why don't you share, why don't you share your poem for us? Okay. It takes bravery to wake up every morning and battle the same demons that may have put you to sleep last night. It takes bravery to be who you want to be. It takes bravery to love yourself. It takes bravery to look in the mirror and see nobody else but who you are and be happy with it. It takes bravery to heal yourself after every failure you may have encountered. And it takes bravery to shake hands with God and let him know that you know he's here. And it takes bravery to be yourself in a lonely world. It takes bravery to carry the world on your shoulders and never let it go, where it takes bravery to let the people know that you know they want you to fail. And it takes bravery to see the light in even five feet of snow. It takes bravery to be brave and do the impossible. And it takes doing the impossible to be brave. Bravery is our mother who carried us for nine months long up until the day that we could listen to our first song. Do you remember a time where you had to be brave? And it takes bravery to be brave and stand out from the rest. If only we were always as brave as we are now, but that's okay because it takes bravery to get back up again. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Very powerful and, and uh, wise, really wise, both of you. So now let's hear how Matteo and Alyssa, together with Laura, put together the song Bravery. We're going to play the song and we'll scroll the lyrics as you go, see if you can tie together the words you just heard with how they became the lyrics. And I'm going to invite you in the chat as you listen to just write any words that strike you from this song. And if a question comes up in your mind for the writers, write that question and we'll, we'll try to get to it. But listen along, write words, images that strike you and write any question you've got. But Blair, let's play Bravery. Bravery's blade, you can cut through fees vines, killing negativity at the crack of the hour. If and will morph into a great source of power, keep bravery natural. It takes bravery to look in the mirror. See nobody else but who you are And it takes bravery To carry the world on your shoulders And never give up Bravery can't be sold Nor can it be given It's an everyday commitment That you must live in Slaves cross free land. It just tells bravery and nothing much more. It just tells bravery and nothing much more. Memories of mother who carried us for nine months long. Up 
until the day that we could listen to our voice. So next time you wander in the voice of doubt, all it takes is bravery's guide to get you right. Thank you so much, Mateo and Alyssa. People were really grabbing onto the idea of bravery can't be sold or it can't be given. Uh, the idea of nothing much more. Bravery and nothing much more, which maybe we have inside ourselves. We're going to get to hear a little bit more from Mateo and Alyssa later, so I'm going to invite you to, to pop off as we invite our next pair of writers on. Let's bring on the, uh, the Jablonski sisters. Let's bring on... Um, Annika and Katya, and I'm noting also in the chat that uh, our listener Jonah was uh, taken by the harmony in that. And that's a kind of a fun thing when you put together writers who've, uh, who've never been together and who've never sung together. And the idea of how do the poems harmonize and also how the voices harmonize. So welcome, Katya. Welcome, Annika. Um, your theme was change. You know, Mighty Writers doesn't, doesn't give the easy stuff. Write something about bravery. Write something about change while we're in the midst of a pandemic. So we want to hear what you wrote. And then we're going to hear the song that uh, came out of that that you also worked on with Lara. So um, which one of you? I, it looks like, uh, Katya, you're, you're poised to go first. Yeah, Annika saying, yeah, you take it, sis. Yeah. Um, change. What is change? It's it one erosion happens? Or is it when you move from your old home? Is it when you make a song by snapping? Or is it when you become allergic to ice cream cake? Sometimes change is scary, like this virus. It makes you feel scared and worried. But other times, change is good. Not to someday move on and out of this moment. Like to someday move on and out of this virus. That's great. Um, OK, uh, Annika. Go ahead. Um, change. What is change? Change is when you move from, from place to place or when you pass something on to another person. Change can be fun or sometimes lonely. Change can be good or it could be scary. You should not fear change. You should not fear change because it can make it, it, it could be exciting and make you wonder where am I going next or how many friends will I make? Change can help make the world a better place. For example, when my mom went to New York, there was a change because I didn't have any more warm hugs. When I went to when I went to sleep, once you return, I realized that change can happen anywhere at, and at any time. So you should not be afraid of it, and you should be ready for it. You should not be afraid of it and you should be ready for it. Well, there you have it. That simple and that big. I, I love how you both got it a small moment and then a large moment. So talking about becoming allergic to ice cream, um, it was real close up. And then also erosion or your mother taking a trip or how change can help make the world better. So thinking really close up and then really large. So you two work together with Laura to make a song, You Should Not Fear Change. We're gonna hear that and just a tease for later in the program, stick around because we have a special guest star who is going to do her own interpretation of the song live at the end of the program. Uh, stick around for, 
for Blair and a tenor guitar uh, for her version of You Should Not Fear Change, but that's the cover. Let's hear the world premiere of the original. This is You Should Not Fear Change by Annika, Katya, and Laura. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And, and uh, it's interesting, somebody listening along was noting the connection between the two songs we just heard, how it takes bravery to change. And, and somebody else uh, is, is lift, lifted up um, the notion that don't fear change because it can be inviting. Um, so right out of the shoot, big themes, big ideas. Um, and it just goes on from there. Um, again, we'll bring back uh, Katya and Annika. And you're seeing these lyrics go up. I'm going to ask Blair to put in the chat for everybody the link to the SoundCloud page, where you can then read all these poems again, read the lyrics, and hear all the songs. Hear the six songs on this Mighty Songs for the Moment March 2021 playlist. You can also hear the playlist from our summer release party last year. So uh, thanks, Blair, for putting that in. And I'd like to bring on Kiki now to uh, share his poem, powerful poem inspired, as he said, by the, uh, the murder of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement this past summer. We're gonna hear his poem and then um, we're gonna hear the song that he and Ami made together. It'll take us in a whole different musical direction, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, just open us up bigger into all we've been dealing with this year. So go ahead, Kiki. 
the yeah. floor is yours. It was on 21st Street where I watched my brother bleed. The cop's gun was the last thing he would see. The same brother who spent nights perfecting beats, now dead at racism's feet. It was on 21st Street where he bled into his last heartbeat. The color of my skin declares war against society. Cannot walk into a store without people eyeing me. I would die to see the day where my people fly freely. They do not want to hear what I believe. They do not want to see me breathe. Scared of the truth, I might say, they will cut my tongue so I cannot speak. How do we fight back when we are weak? It needs to change sooner or later, or that will be me on 21st Street, bagged up in a freezer like supermarket meat. I urge you to keep fighting. We cannot settle for defeat. We get angry, then forget after two weeks. Some people will try to ignore it because these thoughts are too deep. Some people are lazy and the road is too steep. I pray every day that a cop's gun is in my last memory and justice that a blind man can see. Thank you. Thank you, Kiki. Um, and now we're gonna play 21st Street, uh, a really great collaboration. This was one of the first songs that got made in this round of Mighty Songs and it's a powerful tribute. And a, a, a really, again, here's the word again, brave facing of some really challenging situations. So let's queue up 21st Street, uh, collaboration between Kiki and Amit. It was on 21st Street, yeah, I watched my brother bleed. The cops down was the last thing he would ever see. The same brother dead who spends his nights perfecting beats. It was on 21st Street where he played his last heartbeat. Because these thoughts are too deep. Some people are lazy because the road is too steep. I pray every day that a cop's gun isn't the last thing I see. Street, he bled his last heartbeat. It was on 21st Street. 
He blazed like her beat. It was on 21st Street. He blazed like her beat. It was on 21st Street. He blazed like her beat. It was on 21st Street. He blazed like her beat. It was on 21st Street. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kiki. Thank you, Ami, for the work. Things that people were noticing. One person noticed that it was just amazing how the words fly free to the beat. What a great way to acknowledge the collaboration that happened. The, the idea we get angry and forget after two weeks really struck a number of people. An injustice even a blind man could see was another line that was, that was lifted up, um, bagged up like supermarket meat. Uh, Kiki, your words resonating powerfully. Let's bring Kiki back and let's bring a bunch of the writers we've just heard from back. Mateo and Alyssa, Annika and Katya and Kiki and Catherine Buck uh, joining us and, and Ami and Laura, come on back in as well. Um, all these collaborators, whoo, we're halfway through our lineup of these six mighty songs for the moment. And the idea of for the moment, uh, you really you really prove that title with what you wrote. Um, I, I, before we hear from Catherine, I, I just want to start off with a question, and, and Kiki, I'm going to let you be the first one to answer it, uh, and then others think about whether you want to answer it, but Kiki, I, I wonder what you hope people think about or feel or might do next, having heard this song, or when they go back to the SoundCloud link and hear it again. What are you hoping the song, how, how are you hoping the song moves people? I hope that people don't beat it like a trend, like just for a short period of time I actually look for long-term solutions and not just for when it's actually going down I love that phrase don't treat it like a trend it ties into your line about we, we get angry then forget after two weeks Ami I'm wondering because you received this poem how did it hit you and what was the process like in going from poetry to song and what did you hope would people would feel as a result of this i mean this song this song hit hard it hit really hard um it's one thing seeing it written in the newspapers and seeing it on the news but then having kiki who's i guess maybe we're 15 when we first met and then you turn 16 but this is coming from a 15 year old whose life is is impacted by this and you know us adults who who are in a way responsible for the world that we're living in right now it's a real injustice to, to kiki and the other the other writers here that we continue to to allow this to happen and be complicit and so it was um it was really hard it was really hard to to hear those words but there's bravery keeps coming up again like it's really brave for kiki to share those words and be as honest as he was um and that's and that all i think flowed through the musical composition process as well like you know that that drum beat for me was a was a bullet every time it hit every time that hit that was that was the reminder for me that when we were working on this song. And so really grateful to be able to to have Kiki's voice resonate as such. And I hope we talk about the impact that there's 35 people on this call watching this and participating. I hope that every one of them, you know, are a little ripple in the water to a greater change because of the music that everybody is writing today about bravery, change, or important people, whatever the theme may be, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Catherine, who, who's really helped spearhead this for Mighty Writers, along with her colleagues, Celica Ramos, um, Rachel Loper, uh, Erica Hawkins has, has just joined in as part of the, this, this part of the collaboration for Mighty Writers. And of course, Tim Whitaker, the founding visionary of Mighty Writers. We're so grateful to be working with you. Catherine, what, what inspires Mighty Writers to sort of go from students who write to now students who who think and make music with clarity, I guess, is, is now what, what's happening. What, what, what moves you to kind of connect uh, the, these kinds of media? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like you said, our, our mission is to help kids think and write clearly. Um, and, and one of the things that I love about the music, obviously, is that it reaches so many more people. It's able to connect in that really lovely way. Um, music, I think, is really universal. Um, one thing I always like to say to my students, um, and the way I like to describe our work to folks, is that our, our students already have really big, important, wonderful ideas, right? This is all inside of you already. And our job as teachers is to help then other people listen to you, right? And help your message get into their ears, get into their minds. Um, and so I think that's what we've been able to do here. Like you said, we've got a wonderful audience. Um, people are listening to you because you've got important stuff to say. 
Um, and I'm very glad that we're able to help you be heard with that. Thank you. And, and thanks so much for your work. Uh, mighty Writers uh, also made a mighty pivot during the year to uh, um, really make sure food got to families who needed it. And all of their writing sites also became food distribution centers and, and talk about uh, finding many ways to embrace change and make impact. Um, and, and please, in terms of Ami's word of ripple, those of you who are in the chat, copy that SoundCloud link, pass it on to people. Share this, share this. It's like the old Abby Hoffman book cover, steal this book, share this link. Um, I wanna ask the other writers who are right here with us, what do you hope people might think about when, when they hear your song, your poem, your song? Uh, Anya and, and, and uh, Annika and Katja or Mateo or Alyssa, songs we've heard, we're, we're about to hear uh, Sierra's coming up, but what would you, what do you hope? Um, uh, Alyssa, go ahead, what do you hope? Um, to me, when a lot of people hear my writing, I'd hope and just wish that everyone just, like not even with the bravery poem, but with everything I write, um, I just wish that people find it easy for them to be themselves when it comes down to a lot of things in this world. Because if people often find themselves lost in the midst of life sometimes and everyone kind of just, especially with the pandemic going on, a lot of people found themselves living as if we had more than one life to live. So everyone just, um, just sometimes stand out or no, some people just find it hard to stand out or to be themselves in a world full of other people who may have had an impact, like our today's celebrities where we have Beyonce or others where people want to be like them. But I want them to know that it is okay to be strong, be brave, stand out, create your own mark in this world, leave something for people to remember. Because a lot of people end up feeling like, oh, when I leave, what are people going to remember me by? So I just want everyone to know that there's always something you can leave, whether it be um, a quote, a picture, just a word in this world, you know? So I want everyone to just know that it's okay to be who you are and not to be, um, just to look in a mirror and just know that this is who you are and this is who are, mm, who's gonna be remembered when you go. I love that idea that you don't have to live more than your own life, that people get set, caught up thinking they've gotta be like, a celebrity or be like somebody else, but you know, look in the mirror and, and what you have is, a, is enough. Um, Katya, Annika, anything you wanna say about what you hope people get from your songs? A little bit, a little bit louder, if you would, Katya. Um, for the theme change, I, I feel that if you really think about um, a bad thing that is changing, um, then you think of change as totally bad. I don't want it to happen. But then, if you if you think about it, if we are to get a a, a vaccine for this virus, and that's our the world is already changing because of that, and that's why change is good too. Wow. Uh, Mateo, we're going to give you the last word on this question, and then we're going to we're going to move on, and I'm going to. Welcome in uh, in a minute, uh, Gwyneth and Anushka, but uh, Mateo, go ahead. So I kind of feel like that ever since um, the pandemic hit this, uh, the world has gone in the, all these different twisting roads. So I really, and I really hope that people can find the bravery to kind of help out in this pandemic, like do the best that they can, because sometimes it takes bravery to like, face things that you've never faced before and sometimes I kind of wish that people can have bravery to kind of break free from like friendships that are like getting toxic or something and I really hope that people can find bravery in kind of improving their life in general because improving your life is bravery because it takes bravery to tell someone hey you're being mean you're not my friend that takes bravery it takes it takes a blaze in your heart. So you need to, I wish that people, when they hear this song, they know that they can have the bravery to face all these barriers in life and kind of eliminate doubt in people that are trying to doubt them. It takes a blaze in your heart. 
ablaze in your heart. Just let that image sit with you. And then I'm also going to mention that all of these writers will post their websites so that you can link up with their uh, personal coaching, consulting practices, because I think we all need these writers helping us deal with the twists in the road. Um, thank you all. We'll welcome you back at the end for a little bit more. But right now, let's bring on Anushka and Gwyneth. We're going to hear their writing and then the song Important People that they collaborated on with uh, Ami. And as they're coming on, one of the things I'm noting is what a year it's been. And I'm listening to these writers just note the things we've had to deal with, the words that they wouldn't have been writing about a year ago, pandemic, vaccine, George Floyd. Maybe bravery and change wouldn't be such common words, wouldn't be the word cloud uh, anchors that they are now, but writing and art give us a way to organize the world and make a big world a little more graspable. So let's move on to more writing and more art. Um, I think Annika, I think Gwyneth and Anushka were, were asked to write about family and people that mattered in their lives, important people. So why don't we start with, um, Anushka, do you want to read your poem? Sure. In the midst of this coronavirus crisis, many of us are staying with our family at home. Whether you think staying with your pesky sister or boring cousin is the worst thing that could happen, it is actually a very fortunate situation. Families have been torn apart by the virus, yet the families that are together during these tough times can help each other out, physically and mentally. Maybe your sister just wants your help or your cousin is interested in something else and you can now connect with them. Being with your family is a great thing, especially during this time. There's a saying, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. And I think that represents how family works. During challenges, your family helps you through thick and thin. They support you during them and build your motivation and encourage you to try and achieve whatever you set your mind to. Family is essential in completing your goals. Likewise, you can also support your family. So before you say that being stuck with your family is a bad thing, think about the positives. It might just be lucky that we can stay with the people who support us the most during this pandemic. Being together during this unprecedented time is better than being alone. It's up to you now. Is it being stuck or having luck? Is it being stuck or having luck? That's a question that we all get to ponder at the next dinner when we're all sitting together. Um, Gwyneth, why don't you share your take on important people for us? Okay. Go ahead. Teachers, you are important to me. You helped me learn how to read stories in a book, how to write letters from A to Z, and how to count numbers from one to 10. Normally, we meet at school, but of the pandemic we meet on Zoom. I feel sad. I cannot see you in person. I miss you. Teachers, you are important to me. Doctors, you are important to me. You help me and my family be healthy. Even though I see you once a year, I miss you. Doctors, I have questions for you. Why is it hard to make appointments with you now? Is it hard to be a doctor in a global pandemic? Doctors, you are important to me. Teachers, you are important to me. Doctors, you are important to me. I hope to see you again soon. I hope you take care of yourself. Well, we need you more than ever. Teachers, doctors, you are important to me and to everyone. And the big questions keep coming. Is it hard to deal with things in a global pandemic? But I also love Gwyneth, how you draw all of that close to you. I hope to see you again soon. And that kind of connection. Um, so let's hear these from uh, two different places. Uh, students from New Jersey, student from Philadelphia, crossing the bridge through music. And let's hear Important People by Anushka and by Gwyneth and by Ami. Family, sucker luck. Actually, 
happy, a very happy situation. Physically and mentally, help each other out together during these tough times. Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. A special thing about important people. Doing things for you, for me, for everyone in need. A special thing about important people. Being there for you, for me, for our community. Somebody noticed, uh, somebody commented, um, so connected with their emotions for such a young age. Uh, the, the, uh, this was really, really hitting so many different people. Being there for you, me, and community, so true. And the positive energy just radiating. Thank you so much for a song that's a reminder that, as somebody wrote, gives us so much hope. Um, so I want to bring on um, Sierra. Uh, not Sierra, sorry, got out of order, Kalea. Kalea Jefferson, come and join us, please. Uh, Kalea is going to introduce a next theme. She got to write about gratitude and about being thankful. Um, and Kalea is going to share her poem, and, and then we've got two takes on the poem. We've got the song that she worked on with Laura, and then we asked uh, Philadelphia videographer Naeem Murdick to work with Kalea and Laura to make a one minute lyric video that we'll be sharing on Instagram starting tomorrow uh, as another way of interpreting the, the words and imagery of Kalea. But let's start uh, with Kalea, uh, also from across the bridge in Jersey, Sacred Heart School in Camden. Um, Kalea, please share for us your great poem, uh, Thankful. Thankful for the music that circles my head. Although you're distracting, you distract me from my thread. The pictures and videos of Black men being dead. The tweets and jokes about America's being on our deathbed. Near, I won't fear. 
things to the music that calls my ears. And God, the music that covers my tears. You have done so much in this past year. Thank you, Janae, for your healing on me. Listening to your lyrics is my therapy. Give thanks to music, to the sounds that brings the fun out of me. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the music family. So a poem that came from November, Happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the musical family. And again, that idea of the big things out there, um, the images of black men being dead, jokes that we unfortunately had to hear about people being on their deathbed, but music distracting us from that social media thread that can invade. Um, thank you again, Halea, for bringing a, a big and unfortunately sometimes violent and terrible world closer to us in a way to understand it. And um, let's go even further with the music and let's listen to Thankful, this great collaboration between Pelea and Laura. the music that circles my head. Although you are distracting, you distract me from my thread. The pictures and videos of black men being dead. Jokes about Americans being on their deathbed. When the end is near, I won't fear. Thanks to the music that clogs my ears. Thank God for music that covers my tears. You have done so much in this past year. No, I, I, I really want to agree with, uh, with Peggy Buck, who noted a line that it, that it is one of my favorites and might, might be, you know, a, a kind of coin for all of us. Um, dying to see what comes next after I'm done healing. I think we're all dying to see what comes next after this. And, and this song also put me in mind, uh, the great Royal Cafe Live board member, Helen Light, who's been, of course, a, a, a musical presence on the radio for more than 40 years in Philly, always talks about the healing power of music. And, and that line, listening to your lyrics is my therapy and how music can get us through. And, and you just showed it, Kalea. Um, and so Naeem Murdoch, uh, Philadelphia native, um, who uh, went to Pratt and is back in Philly and making great work. He, he works with Chill Moody a lot and, and lots of places. We've gotten to work with him in the past year. And he came in and he got on a Zoom with Kalea and Lara and talked about what this song might look like, having gone from what it, what its words are, what it might sound like in music. And so let's just share about a minute or so of 
uh, thankful through music and, and video. I'm uh, putting in the chat, um, Naeem Murdoch's uh, uh, website and his name. Um, and you can find him on social media at Made by Murdoch. His, uh, his work's been a real gift to us this year. And, and uh, we're grateful for Kalea for, for sharing how she saw the song and that brought it out. And, and you know, somebody noted in the chat that um, the, the young people uh, that we've been hearing from have had to face a lot in this year, a lot of pain and a lot of uh, illness and racism and violence and uh, a lot of challenges. But what's moving to us is how they are shaping it into words, into art, and being brave and just trying to figure it out, which is all we can do. Um, we have one more final original song, and then don't forget, stay tuned for Blair Bodine, who's gonna hit us with a cover of You Should Not Fear Change, and then we'll get a chance a little bit to have a, a couple of different uh, questions maybe to these artists. Um, so let's bring on um, Sierra, uh, our, our final writer and poet, last but certainly not least, Sierra Siraj from Darby, PA. Um, Sierra, can you uh, bring your camera on? We hear you, Sierra, but we're not seeing you. There you come. Whoop. You were there. There you are. Um, and Sierra, tell us what the, the theme was when, when you wrote your poem. What was the theme you were asked to write about? Sierra, do you have somebody else? My theme was about change. On? It was about change. OK, excellent. There feels like there's a bit of an echo. I don't know if there's somebody else in, nearby you as a computer on listening to this. And if they can mute, that might help us because we don't get an echo or turn their sound off. Um, so Sierra, your theme was change. Your poem is Gray Humans. And yes, we'd love to hear it before we hear the song. Go ahead, Sierra, take it away. Be grateful for what you have because change is going and the possibilities of the outcome of your life has sprung from there. You look at steady glare and think to yourself, why is life like this? Why is my family strange? Why is this world so lifeless? Despite this, you think about the stuff that you want but don't have. So you bow down your head and make yourself mad. But you never recognize how foolish you are. You should preserve your life. Thank everyone that has done something nice. For the sake of everyone's energy, this world has turned us into enemies. Against what? We don't know yet, but darkness has to go. I'm calling all the gray humans to go. You need to change your colors and maybe turn to a rainbow. So they in this world can feel good when they see you glow. Be grateful for what you have because it is such a blessing. Be a human that is feeling alone and is concealed in a corner, stressing, seeking money, showing hate, 
all discriminates each and every day. They are destroying everything that is in their way. Learn that you have to come out of your shell to show your colors and glow. Embrace your true self, brave, and let your true beauty show. Thank you so much, Sierra, being brave and letting your true beauty show. Um, I love that. I, lo I, I wonder if you could tell us before we hear the song, where the image about gray humans came from? Where did you get that image? Where did you get that idea? It came from like the world, like how everyone seems to like, not be grateful for what they have already and like are like seem to be like sad upset that they don't have what they want when they have already have things they should be grateful for and i love that idea that what you're saying is that makes us gray and then we have colors inside um that we can let out I think one of the things that I'm hearing in these songs is it doesn't have to stay that way. How it is now might be not how it has to stay. Uh, if, if we're, as we're living, and if we're able to put, one, put, put a foot forward um, and be brave. Um, we are, we're dealing with a, a bit of a computer shuffle. Um, and I wanna just check in to see if, uh, if Jacinda, we're ready to uh, share the screen. Uh, or if Ami actually, if you're the host, Ami, which I think you are, um, can you uh, can you make me the host? I'm the host now. I'm going to share my screen so we get to hear Gray Humans uh, by Sierra, who worked on this with Ami. That's why he was the host. It was it was his collaboration. We're going to share the song and listen along. Change your colors, maybe turn to a 
Ah, uh, hold on a second. Let me uh, stop stop the song. Uh, thank you so much, Sierra. And, and people were, were noting in the chat um, the images of endless possibilities, um, calling the gray humans to go and move on, and, and the idea of turning to it, maybe turn to a rainbow. Lara lifted up that it was maybe turning to a rainbow, which I, which I love is, is, you know, it's not necessarily uh, going to happen, but it's the invitation, it's the attempt. Um, so we're going to end, uh, at the very end, we're going to listen to Blair Bodine take us out with her cover of um, You Should Not Fear Change. But right now, I'd like to bring all the writers and artists back on. And this is going to be your chance to pose questions. We're going to be able, if you uh, raise your hand, um, uh, if you raise your hand, we're going to be able to hear, unmute you and we can hear your question, but um, let's, uh, let's bring all the writers back. Let's bring all the writers back on and uh, as they come on, you know, virtually just, you know, raise your hands. I know we can't see you, but um, you can see them, uh, Kiki and Kalea, Alyssa. Annika and Katya, Anushka, Mateo, Sierra, Gwyneth. Um, uh, I feel like uh, we, we might have all the reason. Laura and Ami come on back in. Um, David, just a tech issue. Can you uh, bring Blair back in with your hosting? Uh, I think we got her back in. Here she okay. is. So we're going to hear from Blair in a minute. But I would love to hear from uh, anybody out there attendees just raise your hand and we'll try to look for you um to see if you've got a question um lane neubauer i'm actually i'm actually seeing what you wrote and i'm wondering if you want to uh if you want to see if we can unmute you uh can you unmute yourself lane or am i able to unmute you i'm not for some reason blair are you blair you're the host now can you unmute lane Maybe Lane, you if you if you want, you could share what you wrote in the chat and maybe elaborate on it a bit. Lane, can you are you unmuted? Okay, can you hear me now? We can. Excellent, okay, Lane. Thanks for that joining was us. A challenge. Um, just I shared that this is such a demonstration of resiliency in the face of challenges. This has been such a challenging year. And these young people just have, um, they've said it in their songs, they have courage, they have bravery. Um, it just demonstrates hope for, you know, for the future. Hope for the future. Well, I, I, I certainly echo that. I think we definitely heard that. I love the idea of resilience in the face of challenges. Um, writing itself is a challenge. Then writing about the big stuff. I, I wonder if any writer might, might offer a thought about how were you able to write about this heavy stuff? How were you able to write about things that were so big, death and, and illness and distance and challenges? Somebody want to want to and Anushka, I want to I want to just toss it to you for a second. Is there um, is there anything you can share with you know how how we how, what's it like to try to write about big stuff like this? It's really. How do you do it? It was a fun experience to get to let my voice out and into the song with somebody else as well. And it was, yeah, it was a really fun experience and it was great to know and get to convey my message. Thank you. It was a fun experience. I love that, that even though you're writing the big stuff, it's a fun experience. Gwyneth, you were Anushka's writing partner. Um, and as we were working last week, you said you thought that you, in working on this, you were a little scared and a little brave. And I'm wondering if you could talk about how you felt both of those things and how you dealt with that. Can you, can you tell us about that? How you were a little scared, how you were a little brave, how you dealt with that? Like, I'm usually scared because I like, don't want to let things out from my body, like keep them hidden. But when you like be brave, you like get every single part of your body out and it's like 
every single word is much more powerful than the next word that you're going to say. Gwyneth, you just made me think about a body in a whole other way, like that we have this body inside us, like we see this outside body, but we have this body inside us that we like to keep hidden and we can let that out. That's so beautiful and powerful. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I'm wondering if anybody else in the, in the audience, any of our attendees have a question or a comment they'd like to make. You can uh, hit the raise your hand button down at the bottom and then we can invite you to unmute or you can write it in the chat. Uh, we just have a couple more minutes, but the chance to hear from these writers. Um, uh, someone in the chat asks, um, he says, you're all writers clearly. Was adding singing to it a source of delight or were you scared? Were you, was it, yeah, great, I get to sing or, ooh, I'm a writer. Uh, Mateo, hand went right up, go ahead. Um, so writing the poem itself was a bit releasing because writing kind of what has like, sometimes you have like feelings all bottled up and sometimes it's kind of like releasing but like, I kind of feel like writing for me is just like venting when, when it's like an imaginary person. So if singing, I thought, oh, this is going to be very releasing and it's actually going to be, I was actually very excited about it. That's great. I love that idea of having an imaginary person in your audience to write to. That's, that's terrific. Somebody else want to talk about what it felt like to, to write and sing, Alyssa, go ahead. Um, it was, sorry, my mom's echoing. Okay, um, it was a really good experience to write because I do like to write, like I um, mentioned when we first started, writing has always been something I found a way to communicate with not only um, people, other people but with myself and a lot of things and a lot of choices I make and to go off of what Mateo said like about having that imaginary person which is why I also always chose when I was writing to write my um poems or anything in a in a form of a letter where it was also it was always dear such and such and sincerely were so I can go back and read and think like oh I really grew from this or why was I in this place or what happened? Well, and Alyssa, right in the middle of your poem, you turned it into a letter to us and asked us a question. Can you think of a time when you were brave? So you, you took that and all of a sudden we're, we're listening to you talk from experience and then all of a sudden we're in the game with you and we're having to think about it. And that's, a, that's really powerful. Um, uh, uh, Annika, Katja, do you want to talk about what it was like to, to record your voices, record your singing? A little louder, Katya. Yeah. Uh, we were singing with Lara, and at first we were kind of shy to sing even a little bit, but um, Lara, with her music, her parts of the music, it made us want to be a part of it too. That's wonderful to hear. Lara, I want to give you a chance to talk, and then we're actually going to hear another version of the song that you made uh, from Blair, but Lara, What's it like? I mean, clearly you're you're an accomplished performer, songwriter, but you're not necessarily a computer technician. Maybe you are, and I don't know that about you, but we've all had to become these kind of distance art makers. What what was it like for you to join in with Annika and Katya and to work in this form? Um, it was really challenging, but it was a, a very welcome challenge. Um because their their words are so beautiful and the things that they wrote are so beautiful that I um we had a lot of kind of like back and forth I would kind of play on my ukulele and I would say does that sound good do you like that and then they would sing something back to me and then together we kind of um morphed the melody into something that they wanted so I was it was really fun to always be kind of checking in with them so even, even though they said that they were shy about singing or I, I feel like their musical input is 100% in the song like all of their ideas are in there I, I even remember um Annika singing to me like that opening line the 
da, 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 da. And I remember having a conversation about that of like, okay, do we want the next note to go higher or do we want it to go lower? And, and it was a really fun moment that we um like built that little line together. It's really cool. That is awesome. And and one, something that somebody's noting in the chat is the idea of um, you know, that you shared your inspirations. Um you shared with other people uh, and that, that idea that um, Gwyneth said about letting your that, that inside body out. Um, one last question that we'll throw out here. Uh, how long did it take to collaborate on the songs between musicians and the writers? Uh, somebody want to answer that? Like what was what was the length of time between when maybe the artist got the song and then the artist and the writers met to when we had something recorded? Someone want to offer that? I mean, maybe you can remember. We've made we've made the the writers work a lot tonight and answer a lot of questions. Uh, it it varied from song to song. It depended on like you know each song has its its own its own energy that needs to to be released in a way you know into music and stuff. And so, um, honestly, some some of the songs happen faster than others. And some some happen a little bit slower, but at the end of the day, um, it's not so much about about how much time it took. It's it's really like the feeling that we get after we we heard the song. So honestly, some of the things like Kiki and I worked on his song a lot, and I honestly I lost track of time with it. You know, we we spent Kiki was it October November we worked on it, early December. Yeah, it it took a while, but. <laughs> But it was worth it. Exactly. And that was that was the beautiful thing. And Sierra's song, like the melody was was weirdly already in the lyrics somehow, you know, and we kind of just jumped into it and it, it, it flowed. But, you know, every song has its own story that, that gets told in the production. I, I think there were three or four meetings that roughly that the art, the, the writers and the musician had. And then, of course, there's a lot of work that we don't see that Laura and Ami are doing as they they put together and mix and you know imagine I mean this is one of the things of our time singing a song into your phone push and send it arrives at somebody else's place and then they loop it in with their piano or their guitar or their drum beat um, it, it's kind of amazing and then here we all are um, we're going to now set up this will be our last song to hear um, but Alyssa wants to know from the writers and i'm going to ask the writers to do this while blair is playing her song each writer write your favorite line in your poem in the chat Alyssa wanted to collect those up so we can do that as we're listening to blair version of this song this is now you know this, this is kind of whisper down the lane creation right um we're going to go from writers alone in their room writing writers getting on zoom with other writers with their poems with a songwriter making a song so now the poem has changed to a song and now the song's been given to all of us to listen to and now the song's been given to another songwriter and uh they're going to make their own spin on it so this is sort of like john prine writing angels from angel from montgomery and then bonnie Wright do it or carol king writing you make me feel like a natural woman and then aretha franklin do it well this is the jablonski sisters writing you should not fear change and then blair bodine doing it if you remember one question was what is change and another another answer uh in another of the jablonski writing was is it when you make a song song by snapping so i'm going to ask all the writers to turn off your cameras so that we can just see blair um and then we'll all come back for one final hoorah but uh let's just bring it to blair performing live um her version of You Should Not Fear Change. Anika and Katya, um, you can stay on or you could go away. Well, Anika and Katya, I wanna thank you for writing such a beautiful song. I wanna thank all of the incredible poets and writers here tonight. Mighty writers indeed, so much beautiful music that was being streamed through my computer that it actually crashed by the beauty of all the words and all the images that you guys spun for us tonight. But I had a lot of fun um, using this tenor guitar to make a cover of the Jablonski sisters' beautiful song, You Should Not Fear Change. Mm -hmm. Sometimes change is scary, like 
this virus it can make you feel melancholy it can divide us but change can make the world a better place you should be ready for it oh you should not fear change because change can be exciting sometimes change is loved and other times it's feared but you should not fear change because change can be inviting change can make you cheer or help you make a song by snapping oh, oh, oh. you should not feel change oh you should not fear change Can it make you wonder where are we going next? And how many friends will I make? Oh, what is change? And does it make you wonder? As I move from my old home, you should not fear change because change can be exciting oh you should not fear change because sometimes it is love you should not fear change because change can be inviting change can make you cheer or make you make a song by snapping oh oh you should not fear change. Mm -hmm. You should not fear change. Mm -hmm. You should not fear change. One of the great things about working at World Cafe Live is that there are artists everywhere and Blair, her day job is chief advancement officer and she helps attract support to us. But Blair is an award-winning singer, songwriter, uh, performer, recording artist, find her on Spotify. She's got two albums out. I'm a Yaris, you can find him on Spotify. He's got an EP and other songs out. Lara Discano, you can find her on Spotify um, and, and explore their music. So thank you, Blair. Let's bring every artist back on the screen, please. Bring all the writers and artists back on for one final bow. Lara Liscana, Liscano, excuse me, Alyssa Fernandez, Gwyneth Wong, Annika and Katja Jablonski, Talia Jefferson, Ami Yaris, Anushka Dar, Mateo Nevin, Kiki Mazama, Sierra Siraj, Catherine Buck is out there somewhere. Um, uh, Emma Lopez couldn't be with us tonight, but her writing fed into important people. Thank you all. Um, you should not fear change. Uh, I think you've given us our marching orders because we know the only thing we can count on is change. Um, some of us have some big changes coming up very, very soon, even this week. Uh, and uh, they won't fear them. Uh, so we send love out to all the change that's coming, and we send bravery out to all of us. Um, Blair, let's just let's just roll uh, the, these credit screens just so we can stamp those. I, you want to screenshot these writers' names? Uh, you're going to hear from them again. Special thanks to these writers. We just shouted them all out, uh, and um, thanks also to the fabulous artists we got to work with on this project, who gave so much. That artist, Stano, Ami Yaris, and guest artist Blair Bodine, Naeem Murdoch, the great Mighty Writers team, Catherine and Sarika, Erica, Rachel's not on here, Tim's not on here, the World Cafe, not just the education team, the whole staff, the indomitable Curry Park was on with us tonight, listening and watching. Thank you, KP. Thanks to the whole World Cafe Live team and the education team that made this happen, Jacinda Arano, Blair, Dequisha Jones, 
We can't do this without support from so many generous individuals. Thanks to everybody who supports Mighty Writers, who supports World Cafe Live, who supports art making, and particularly art making with young people in Philadelphia. Um, hey, this is about poets, whose poetry inspires songs. So we're gonna play you out with a song by Ami Yaris. And guess what? We didn't know that Dylan Thomas was a mighty writer, but he wrote a poem called Do Not Go Gently. And Ami Yaris wrote a song called Not Go Quietly that uh, tells us that as we go off into the night, let's not be quiet. Let's face change and be brave. We're gonna play it out. You can stay on if you want and listen or send messages in the chat. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks to all these wonderful writers. Thanks for the inspiration you've given us. Have a great night and we'll see you again. Let's roll the song. Thank you.